say this. Some of you were here Wednesday night and I got to share just a few minutes. 
It may be me. I may not be talking loud enough. <laughs> Well, I was, I, I was saying, I wanted to tell you guys this. Some of you were here Wednesday night. Some of you may not have been able to be here. But I want to tell you that my wife and I, Christy, we're very grateful to be here with you now. Not just visiting, but we, we're here. Yes, yeah, amen. <laughs> and I also said this Wednesday night that we've always known that you guys uh, treated us and viewed us like your family. And that's one of the things that's very, very important to us. And so we're grateful. And now... I can say a slightly different statement than I got to say before. I told you guys through the years I've known Brother David and Sister T and that he's been a pastor in my life, but now I can say like you can. He's my pastor. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm grateful that God has allowed us to be here. And uh, as we go forward and the new things that God has for us, we'll have you guys uh, informed and as connected and as involved as you want to be. But Again, we do want you to understand that we love you guys, and that's not just words that we say casually. Right. I, I don't do that. So we love y'all, and we appreciate you letting us be here with you. Yes, amen. amen. Let's do this. If you want to, I know we usually stand, and I understand. I, I get that. But if you will, have a seat for just a minute, if you don't mind. I want to ask you a question. I want you to think about this, because... When I say what I'm about to say to you, when I pose this question, we'll have various opinions and ideas. All of us will. But here's the question. What do you crave? Yeah. Think about that for yes, just a sir. minute. I'm not necessarily, not that I would be offended if somebody spoke out and said something. I'm not necessarily asking it for you to say out loud, but ponder that thought. What do you crave or, or what are you craving? Because... There, there is a craving inside of every one of us. Yeah. The, well, I'll use a slightly different word. There's a longing inside of every right. one of us for something or someone or some place or some purpose or whatever. But I really want to focus in on that right there about what are you craving. Here's a, here's a verse I think that will help us put it into a little bit better perspective. You'll be familiar with it, most of you. I'm pretty sure we call it the Sermon on the Mount. Yes. That's where it's from in Matthew chapter 5. Verse 6 says this, Blessed are they, or blessed, whichever you prefer, are they which do, listen to this, hunger and thirst after righteousness. Why? Yes. Why? Why does he say you're going to be blessed if you hunger and thirst? He tells you why. What's the end of that verse say will happen? The end result is you shall be filled, right? Yes, sir. If you are hungry and thirsty, you will be filled. That's a promise. That's not, that's not based on something Glenn or any other preacher or teacher or whatever. That's a promise from the words of Jesus. Some of you guys have those Bibles that have the words of Christ in red. That's what you'll find right there. Those are words directly from His lips to our ears and our hearts that if we'll hunger and thirst for righteousness, we'll be filled. It's interesting. I, I often say this when I've been here with you guys just in a visiting capacity. I pay attention to all kinds of things. In fact, I almost said I pay attention to everything, but I guess that wouldn't be fair because I might miss something. But I pay a lot of attention, way more than I ever say. And here's what I noticed. This morning, you may have to roll it back just a little bit in your mind, and, but if you'll remember, there's several times through this morning when God was moving and ministering and doing what He was, that Brother David said some of these very things about hunger. Mm -hmm. He said that. He said some things about living, if I can put it in a, a simple term, Living right before God, living holy, living righteous. Isn't that interesting? Because when he asked me would I do this service this afternoon, that was before this afternoon. That was before this morning when he asked me. Right. But because it's important to me that I'm on track with what the Lord wants to say and do, because I actually do. I really do ask him when I get an opportunity. I'm like, yeah, but what do you want to say, Lord? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because it's really, it doesn't matter. It's really not going to be beneficial. Even Get this and don't get sideways with me, but understand, if we get up and just simply start saying and quoting Scripture, that's really not going to do you good. Not because of the Scripture. Come on. Right. That's right. But me just rattling off a bunch of Scripture is not going to do you any good. That's right. Okay? There's people that know, read, and can quote way more of this book than any of us in here. Right. Any of us. <clears throat> but they have... Watch this. It's another thing that Brother David said this morning. They have zero relationship with the author of this book. So it doesn't matter how much we can quote. Right. Yes. When you're out there in the community and you're out doing whatever, whether it's on your workplace or you're doing some kind of 
mission or ministry or outreach or whatever the case may be, Walmart, whatever. It's not as important how much scripture you can quote to that person standing before you. It is important how much you can share about the person yeah. 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 that wrote this book. Now we know in, later in the scriptures in the latter part of the New Testament, it says that men were moved by the Holy Ghost and they wrote or they penned right. what God gave them. So we know that technically the Holy Ghost is the author, but you'll understand that He is the Spirit of Jesus. It says that the Spirit of Jesus Christ, the Spirit of Holiness, the Holy Spirit. He's got multiple names all referring to the same entity, the same person. Right. Are y'all with me so yes, far? Sir. So what we want to do is we want to have an authentic relationship with that one. That when we talk about Him, I'm not just talking about Him, I'm talking for Him. Right. And I'm sharing. I'm get. See, here's the thing. You can't give somebody something you don't have. That's right. Right. That's right. 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 If you ask me for a hundred dollars, if I've got it, then I can give it to you. But if I don't have it, I just simply can't give it to you. Yeah. If you ask me for something from the Lord, if I don't have that, I can't give it to That's you. That's right. Man. It's all Him. What do you crave, or what are you craving? So listen to this. You guys know I like to do word study. So let's look at a few of these words in this one simple verse of Matthew five six. When it says blessed or blessed, again, whichever way you prefer to say that, that means to be happy, to be well off, or to be prosperous. Not so much necessarily prosperous in the sense that we normally think. We typically associate prosperity and prosperous with finances. And okay, it does apply to that. But get this. I can be much more prosperous and not have a lot of money in the yeah. bank. Yeah. Now, I get it. It takes finances to do things in life, and it takes finances to do ministry. And it takes finances to, you know, take care of your obligations that you have at your home and, and your families and your children and all that. But that's not real prosperity, the, the finances, because here's the deal. There's a lot of people that are preaching and teaching the financial side of prosperity, mm -hmm. and that's all they got. Come yes, on. Sir. And when that's all gone, right. they don't have anything. Right. Are you with me? Yes. So it means to be happy or well off or prosperous, but it also means this, to be successful, mm -hmm. to have plenty. How about this? Maybe you never thought about this part of being blessed. It means to be set apart or to be consecrated. Yes, sir. Yeah. It means for a holy purpose. And it means to make or to pronounce holy. So now we're not talking about things that we normally associate. We're talking about this is the God quality of life that he's come to give us. When, when he says we're blessed, he himself, God himself, is the one that pronounced the blessing on us. And he's like, I didn't give it to you for stuff. I'm going to take care of, remember, your needs. Yeah. Remember that? Not all your wants, right. but all of your needs. He's promised. That's a covenant promise that I'll supply all of your need. Right? Yes, sir. Yeah. It doesn't mean it always happens immediately, and it doesn't mean it always happens <coughs> automatically, but it's going to happen. Whatever we have legitimate need of, he's going to make sure he gets that to us. Right. So we don't have to worry. That's why he told us that. You don't have to worry and don't take any thought of tomorrow or the next day or what's going on. He's Look around. The, the flowers of the field, the birds of the air, am I taking care of them? If I'm doing that and I'm taking note of all of those, then surely I can take care of you. Yes. Yes. But that's easier said than done, right? It really is for all of us. Me too. There are days that you and I, we're, we're faced with this thing called life. And there's a rub there. There's a struggle there because even though we know God's faithful, even though we know His promises, or at least we know some of them, it's the reality that when we're facing a, a need, sometimes that's difficult because that thing's screaming at us. That need is. But He's promised us. All I need to really do, here's my need. I need to get more of Him. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's good. If I have more of Him, I'm going to be all right because the, the truth is, I might have been walking this out a little longer than some of you, and some of you have been doing it longer than I. But at the end of the day, here's the need. We need more of Him. Yes, I'm never going to have all that I need of Him on this side of eternity. Now, that's not because He's withholding Himself from me or you. The reality is it's me or you that we're withholding ourselves from Him. Amen. The more I submit myself to Him, remember we heard that word this morning too, the more I submit myself to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. The more I give myself to Him, the more I can receive of Him because I can only receive from Him to the degree that I've been emptied out of myself yes, yeah. or this world or the things right. of this world. Are y'all with me? Yes, yes. sir. Yes. Now I'm talking to the church, so I'm not, we're, we're not talking to anybody else right now. We're talking to the church. So here's the thing. Even though we're part of the church, capital C, the reality is we need more of Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Because I dare say none of us are seeing on a regular, constant, consistent basis what some of these guys were seeing. Right. And there was nothing special about them other than that they just were convinced and they hadn't settled it. I, I'm going to get as much of Jesus as I possibly can. Yes, sir. So what do you crave? How about to, to hunger? It means to want or to crave ardently, A-R-D-E-N-T-L-Y, to crave ardently or to seek with eager desire. Now listen to this word ardent. When it says to crave ardently, that means to it would be to be like hot or burning or that causes a sensation like burning or to have a fever. It means to have the equality or the appearance of like fire or to have passion or to be zealous or something of that nature. So when it says that we're to hunger and thirst for righteousness, it says we're supposed to be like, we'll use this term that most of us are from, we need to be on fire. Right. Yes. Yeah. And again, I'll, I'll say it of myself and us, I dare say we probably all have a little bit more space to be a little more yes. on fire for Jesus right. and the things of Him. Yes, sir. That's not putting us down. That's just a healthy reality check that I think is okay. Yes. I think all of us could probably say, hey, we're doing better than we once were. Mm -hmm. But here's the question. But are you doing as good as you once were? Right. Maybe. maybe, maybe not. I'm, I, I'm not the one that can answer that. Here's what I mean. Has there been a time in your life right now than before right now you were more focused on Jesus, you were more on fire for Him, you were more dedicated to Him, you were more intentional about Him? For some of us, you're going like this, and I'll do the same thing. You know what? Me too. Yeah. Sometimes we do that. Sometimes it's not necessarily because of a sin issue. Maybe it's just we're just too busy. Come on. And if we're not careful, we'll get so busy that we get distracted. And that's one of the key tactics of the enemy. You know, the devil, the one that's always trying to get us. He's not always trying to just flat out kill us, although I think he, he would like to do that. But if he can just distract us, if he can get us yes. off track, yes. if he can get us to lose our focus on the main thing, which is Jesus himself and our relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus, then he's done pretty good because he's keeping us from going forward. Do you all understand? Yes, sir. So if we, if we could say, yeah, you know what, there is times that I've been more on fire or more focused on Him, then it's a real simple remedy. Just do the first part, which some of you just literally did this. That's the confession part. Now say, God, not only forgive me, but help me. Stir me up. I want to be passionate about you again. I want to be more on fire for you. Or whatever the terminology is for you that works, because the only way I know to remedy that situation is to go back and do like the scripture says, go back to your first love. That's right. Yes. yes, sir. And I'm not saying that I'm the guy that's perfected that. Not at all. You know I don't do that. I tell you guys, every time I've been in front of you, I try to be very real and very open and honest with you guys. I'm not somebody who's got it all figured out and I've got it all together. I'm just as messed up as you can be at times. But I do have my mind made up. I'm going to go after Jesus. Right. Yes. And to the best of my ability, I'm going to do his will because that's what matters. See, at the end of this whole thing that we call life, I really am after one thing. I just want to hear well done. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I don't need anything else. I don't want anything else. But I do want to hear well done because in the Bible that I read, it says there's one of two things that we get to hear. Yes, sir. It's well done or depart. I refuse to hear depart. Yeah. Amen. And that's not because, it's not because I say I'm not going to hear it. It's because God made a way so I don't have to hear yeah. it. Oh, I want to hear well done. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not looking for all these kind of uh, what you, what you, uh, validation here on the earth. I'm not looking for that. I don't, I don't care about that. I think it's right to give honor and to tell people thanks and be polite. And all, but I'm not talking about that. I want to hear Jesus Christ himself. When he looks at me, the Bible says he's got these eyes that burn with fire. Mm -hmm. And he can peer right into the core of our innermost being and see even the thoughts and the intents of our heart. I want him to be able to stand in front of me and me stand in front of him and hear, well, I won't stand very long because, I mean, once you see him for who he is, yeah. right. yeah. you're, you're undone. Oh, right. But I want to hear him say, well done, William. Amen. You you did what I called you to do. Not not perfectly. I know he can't say that. I know that. But he'll he'll be able to say, well done. Yeah, I'm glad. Amen. I want to be on fire for him. I want yes. to have my heart burning. There, there's a, any of you guys ever heard of an older man? He's passed away a number of years ago. A.W. Tozer. Yes, sir. He, he wrote a number of really good books like The Knowledge of the Holy and uh, uh, with the Knowledge of the Holy and um, 
for it's a good one to start right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to remember the other title there at the moment. But anyway, he wrote a number of books. But here's the point. He, he kind of made this statement and said something regarding the fellowship of the burning heart. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's what I want to be part of, part of the fellowship of the burning heart. And what he was referring to is, you know how, for instance, you know how when Jesus is walking on one of his travels and it says that he comes across a couple of people yes. and they didn't really recognize, I'm just putting it in everyday terms, right. is this okay? He comes across a couple of guys that don't really recognize him for who he is. Later on, they're having a meal together. They, he breaks bread and, and it says in the moment that their eyes were open. They realized who this was. And then they reflect on the conversation that he had with them as they're walking on the way. And they said, man, didn't our hearts burn within yes, us? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's what I want. I want. When Jesus speaks to me, I want my heart to burn. And I want it to be to the degree that I've got to, like Jeremiah said, it's not something I can hold inside. I want to share that with others. Not, not because I'm trying to be somebody or do something or have my name out there, but I want it to be about Jesus because... He has truly been so good to me yes, that I do, I do have an obligation oh, to share him. Yes, sir. I, I'm indebted to Jesus because I don't deserve any of his goodness. Most of you now know that's, that's something that I say pretty often. I'm doing better than I deserve, but that's because it's 100% true. I'm doing much better than I deserve. If I got what I deserved... I would have been turned away from him forever. Yes, he would have put sir. me in hell a long time ago. Yes, he would have been just in doing it. In other words, he wouldn't have been unfair. That's right. He would have only given me what his word says was going to be my consequence for all my rebellion and my sin. But for some reason, he put up with a lot of job yes, for a right. long, long time Amen. from me. He yeah. did know, obviously, he knew I would finally surrender. Come on. Yeah. But he had to put up with a lot of trash for a long yes, time from yes, me. Sir. And the truth yeah. is, He's put up with some trash since then. Yes, yeah. yes, yep. I'm just being real. He has. Not because I woke up and I said, well, I'm going to do this today right. or right. to you know, get, get at God or wrong Him or whatever. But there's some days that I just don't walk according like you were saying this morning, Pastor. I don't walk in the Spirit some days. I didn't wake up and plan that out and say, I'm just right. not going to walk That's in the Spirit good. today. I'm yeah. just going to walk in my flesh. No, I didn't do it that way. Yeah. But just like you, and sometimes my flesh gets in the way, yes, and I don't stop and reel him in Amen. and say, you better get yeah. back in the Spirit. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. right? right. <laughs> but I, don't, I, I want there to be less of those times. Yes. I want there to be more times of being in His Spirit, being devoted to His Spirit, burning with passion for Him. Going after Him, pursuing Him, because at the end of the day, it's not just going to be good for me. It's going to be good for everybody right. around me. That's right. Yeah. My personal pursuit of the Lord is not just about me. It's also about you. Because you don't need me and you don't want me if I'm not really in the Lord. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. Look, I know that I know that I know I'm supposed to be here. My wife's supposed to be here. Right. But if we're not in Jesus, right. you don't want me here. And it's not going to be good for anybody. Yeah. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. The only good that any of us can give each other is if we get over into the Spirit and learn to stay there more, to right. abide there, or to dwell there more. Yeah. Yes, sir. To thirst. It's like a painful thirsting. You know, David writes in different places in the Psalms about thirsting, and he, he uses, the best he can, he uses parallels to try to convey these truths. And he'll say things like, you know, as the heart, H-A-R-T, yeah. and he's talking about a deer, yeah. you know that. He's like, yeah. you know how there's a, a deer will start panting yeah. and it'll be audible and he's thirsting for water. I'm not sure if I shared this analogy with you guys ever before, but some of you guys that are hunters will already know where I'm going when I start this. But I learned something about deer and I didn't know this till just several years ago. And it's this. The reason that when a deer gets shot and it takes off running for water yeah. is because it knows that's its life that's exactly source. Right. Yes, sir. I didn't know that, so I thought, well, man, God in His supreme wisdom shared that truth with David, and no doubt David was probably a hunter as well. And so he says, hey, you know, just like the heart, just like the deer pants for water, David said, that's the way my soul Yes. thirst yeah. 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 for you. And then I've got to ask myself, just like you should, 
Is that really the way that my heart thirsts for God? Am I literally to the point of like this deer that has just been shot and wounded and knows it's dying and it takes a direct route to the water source because it knows that's its only chance for survival possibly, even if it's brief? Am I really that thirsty for God? Maybe, but maybe not. And if, if not then there is a remedy. Yeah. Yes, sir. There is a remedy. It, it usually looks and goes something like this. Maybe not literally in this structure or this type of building, but it's going to look a lot like this. It's going to be a lot like I probably got to get back to something kind of like this space down here yes. that we call the altar area. Yes, I'm probably going to need to spend a little yeah. bit of time down at something like this, whether, it, again, whether it's here or it's in my home, in my bedroom, or, or at the... Uh, chair that I normally go or whatever you do. Am I making sense? Yes. Like, it, is that where I am? Because if not, I probably need to spend a little more time there because that's what I need most. I need Him. Yeah, we've got all kind of other needs going on around us all the time and so do people that are connected to us. And, you know, we have people say, man, can you do this or help this way or this way? Or what? Yeah, but what I need most and what they need most, they need something from Heaven. Yes. Yes. And the only way they're going to have that is if I'm consistently going after Him. This righteousness that Jesus speaks of here is the condition that's acceptable to God. That's what He's looking for. He's looking for integrity or virtue. He's looking for purity of life. Now get this. Again, Brother David said something this morning about our thoughts. The reality is I'm, I'm with Him. I'm grateful that you don't say played out in front of you on some big screen what all my thoughts are every day because what I'm not doing before God, I'm not sitting around trying to think up a bunch Come of crazy on, stuff. Come on, but I am just like you that at times during the day crazy stuff comes to my mind. Now get this, I'm grateful that the Lord taught me this some years back that just because a thought comes to my mind does not mean that I've automatically sinned. Yes, right. Right. It's yeah, what go. I do with right. the thought right. that determines it. Right. Can I take great comfort in that? Not because it's okay to have crazy thoughts come to my mind, but if they come, my responsibility right. and your responsibility is to do like the Bible says, pull those thoughts down right. yeah. and get my mind on things above, things yes. of God. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Plead the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Now, do things like that because the devil can't stay around when that stuff right. starts happening. Right. You start talking about Jesus openly, verbally, you start talking about the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus, and that stuff can't stay around. I That's promise right. you that. Right. It may take a minute, but it's not going to stay. But nonetheless, I don't want my thoughts to be on things that grieve God because I want to live, like it says here, of righteousness, a purity of life. It's the quality of life that God considers acceptable. Yes, sir. Philippians 3.9 says this. Paul writes, And be found in Him, not having mine own righteousness. Did you get that? Yeah. Yeah. It's not my righteousness. It's the righteousness of Jesus Christ that has been shared with us. Yeah. Not having a righteousness of my own, which is of the law, but that which is through faith in Jesus Christ, the righteousness of God, which is by faith. Holiness is... Sometimes we talk about that word, especially in Pentecostal circles or settings, and we get a certain idea, kind of comes to mind, and we think, oh, he's talking about this or that or that. No, no, I want to give you a whole different definition that's more biblical. Holiness is a person. His name is Jesus Christ. Yes, that's what I want to talk about. Because all the other stuff, that, there, is a, there is a time and a place for other things that are called under the banner of holiness, you know, like we'll just use one. Like modesty, okay, I'm 100% down with that. But just because you quote unquote dress modest doesn't make you holy. Right. That's right. Because you may still have a wicked heart and a foul mouth. Right. Right. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm not right. accusing anybody of anything in here. I'm just stating the fact that modesty is very important and good and it's godly. It's, it's, it's respectful. But that by itself is not what makes me holy. Right. What makes me holy is a person, and his name is Jesus Christ. And if I've got him, then guess what? I want to do those other things. Yes. Yes. I want to be modest. I want to watch my mouth. I want to live in a self-controlled manner. Why? Because I got the person of Jesus, which yes. he himself is holiness. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, sir. 
Here's the goal. Ephesians 4.13 says, Till we all come in the unity. Where did we hear that? I thought I heard something about unity this morning. Surprise, surprise. So here it is again. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Sure. What? Till I come to the fullness of Christ. See, the fullness has already been given available or made available to us, but we may not be walking in that yet. And I would say probably none of us are yet, but we should be on our journey and we should be making progress because that's what God is after. He sent Jesus, yes, to die for our sin, yes, to give us a way out of hell, yes, to do those things, but He also sent Jesus so that we can have His fullness in us and He can be expressed through us because on the earth right now, Jesus can, and He does at times, literally appear and reveal Himself to people. But when He does that, He is in a single place at a single moment. Are you with me so far? Yeah. Jesus can walk the earth still like He did at one time. But when He does that, He can only reveal Himself to one person at a time in that regard. But what He did do was He made it possible for us to be a representation of Jesus all over. Are you with me? Yeah. It's, it's the reality that Jesus wants to live His life in us and through us so that people can have a contact with the person of Jesus. Not that we're replacing Him. Nobody's that foolish, I don't think. We're not going to replace Him. We never have, never will. But we are supposed to be a representative. When it says Christian, it means Christ-like. Right. I'm supposed to be like Jesus. And there's some parts of me that aren't, and you too. But we are supposed to be making progress. Amen. Blessed are they, or blessed, whichever, again, which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. If you'll go ahead and get ready, brother, I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this up. I appreciate it. I want to ask you again, what are you craving? What do you crave most? Here's the reality. Some of us may not would want to even answer that question out loud at the moment, and I get that. I'm not trying to make anybody feel uncomfortable, but it's just, you know how you can know what you're craving? Watch this. I'll give you a real good answer to the question. I'll pose the question, and I'll give you the answer, and you don't have to say nothing, okay? You want to know what you're craving most? It's going to be primarily what that thing is that you first think of or look for or do or reach for or whatever in the morning. Right. And it's going to probably be what you do last in the evening. Right. And it's probably going to be what you mostly do during the day. Yeah. Are you with me? Yes. So then you can say, okay, well, let's think about that. What am I craving? If that's true, and I believe that's a fair assessment, it's whatever I think of usually first, last, and throughout the day mostly. So then if that's the definition, I think that's a fair definition, then that'll tell you what you're craving most and that'll help you find out, hey, am I really craving Jesus? Yeah. Am I really passionately pursuing Jesus? Maybe, but maybe not. I don't know. But I know me. I'll tell you of me. Mine needs to be better. Yeah. Right. Me. Yeah. My pursuit of Jesus needs to be better. <laughs> because there's been times where it's been more focused or it's been more... Uh, uh, directed or however we need to say this and then there's been times where maybe I haven't done so well also but I want to go here's the thing at the end of this year because you know I don't know about all the whole thing with New Year's resolutions and all that kind of stuff I'm not saying it's bad or wrong I just I think typically that doesn't go so great for most people so but what if we did this what if we said you know what one thing that I know that I want to do is I want to try to be much more intentional and much more purposeful in my pursuit of Jesus this coming year, if we have it. Because the truth is, we may not have this next year. We think we do. Some of us have some pr probably pretty big plans for 23. We may, or we may not even get to this. We really just don't know. I don't know. I'm not suggesting either way, because I just don't know. I don't know. But I know this. If we've got the next year, or whatever portion of it that we do have, Perhaps we could do a little bit better in being a little bit more focused and a little bit more purposeful in our pursuit of Him. Because again, that's not just good for us, that's good for those around us. Yes. Would you stand? <laughs> Father, I do confess that 
there have been times where I've been much more focused and I ask you not only to forgive me, but to help me and stir me even more so for pursuit of you. God, that I would make the most of every opportunity to set aside time for you. Help me in that. Help me to be more disciplined in that, God. But I ask the same for my family and my friends here as well, God, that you would do that and that we would be people that actually, as your word says, hunger and thirst after you, that we would crave you more than even our necessary daily bread, that we would crave you, God, that we would go after you. God, help us to be ones that have the burning hearts. God, that we would love you with everything and that we would seek you, as the Scripture says, with our whole heart. However you feel like you need to respond, you can do so. We love you guys.